We're standing in Christopher Cutts Gallery at the Ron Martin Exhibition, Conclusion and Transfers and Conclusions and Transpositions. As the title suggests, we're juxtaposing two bodies of work, one executed 50 years ago, these triangular shaped paintings, you can see one of them behind me, and then uh, a revisit of a similar body of work in the early parts of 2001-2002 called the Conclusions and Transpositions. In 1968, Ron moved from doing the more traditional maquette format, a conclusion element, and then a finished work, the transfer, to making two identical paintings. And he did these all in shape canvases. He did three particular body works. One were uh, a, a group of equilateral triangles. The second was a group of scaling triangles, which we see here. And as you can see, these paintings are seemingly identical. It helps that he uh, used a roller to roll the pigment on so it has a mechanical smooth finish and of course he taped off the edges in the bunch. And this would be the third of those series and you can see that they are a shaped triangular canvas with a cutout component. There's a right angle triangle which is butted up against a rectangular shape and then at the very end is the, another scaling shaped triangle just sticking out at the end. One of the things I wanted to point out is that the works are relatively low to the ground and that's an important principle to Ron's practice. He wants them in your space. So when you're there, they're right there with you. I'm now standing in front of a, a conclusion and transposition executed in around 2001. They evolved out of a body of work which were called the plan for painting. Like so much of Ron's work, they're, they are systemic paintings. There's a particular uh, sequence of applying the color. He runs through the whole entire chromatic scale of uh, the Windsor and Newton Finity acrylic colors. And uh, I could get into the elements about how it's done, but basically it runs from, there's a series of these diamond shaped squares, and in total in the whole piece there's nine of them. But they, they we get a little bit, um, they, because they layer, they, they get this kind of complexity about them. So this is the parallel between something that was done over 30 years ago, the conclusion and transfers in the late 60s, and the conclusion transpositions which were done in 2000, 2001. Now you can see it's the idea of doing two seemingly identical paintings. It's the same thing, that pairing of those paintings and, and what we do when we look at them. However, the most important difference is pretty obvious, is unlike the conclusion transfers which are a mechanical finish using a roller and taping off hard edge, this actually has the gesture, the stroke, and the complexity is extraordinary. And the fact that they're sort of doubled down from the plan for painting just gives them a little, like, it's like double barrel now. And you just see them and you kind of watch them and there's, uh, there's almost a three-dimensionality when, you, you, when you're looking at them. It's probably the, the, the juxtaposition of two pictures that are seemingly identical, but of course they're not.